Studies Committee and a member of the Subcommittee on uh, Educational Programs. And as we begin tonight, I'd like to share with you what prompted us to bring this AARP Frog Fighters program to you to, in Londonderry. Last fall, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal, and it was headlined, Fall Fraud Against the Elderly is Epidemic. In 2012, people over 60 made up 26% of all fraud complaints that were tracked by the Federal Trade Commission, the highest of any age group. A 2010 survey by the Investors Protection Trust found that one in every five Americans over 65 has been abused financially. Also in 2010, financial abuse cost older Americans at least $219 billion. And yet, investors estimate that only 10% of all financial fraud is reported. It's believed that older people often fear losing their independence if their children find out. The other issue that came up as the committee was planning this program, again, the Manchester Union leader, front page, top of the fold, scammer, and this is Tuesday, January 14th, 2014. Scammers target elderly, rake in cash, Manchester. Three people, ages 77, 87, and 92, fell for a scam after police said callers asked the trio to wire money to relatives in distress. In one instance, a Rite Aid manager recognized the 92-year-old as the same man who had transferred cash earlier and, suspecting it was a scam, convinced him to cancel the second transaction and call police. Police learned of the latest telephone scam making the rounds Friday when a 77-year-old Caleb woman reported she was scammed out of $700. She explained she received a phone call from someone saying her nephew was in an accident in Mexico and needed money for some auto repairs. Following the caller's instructions, the 77-year-old woman wired $700 from the Rite Aid on Willow Street to the location in Mexico City. Short time later, she learned her nephew was not in Mexico. And that same day, according to the union leader, an 87-year-old Maple Street man filed a similar complaint. Again, a caller told him his grandson needed money to repair a vehicle following an accident. The man went to Hannaford's over on Hanover Street and wired money to a location in Mexico City. He wired more money a second time after the scammer called back and said more money was needed. Then on Saturday, a 92-year-old, it isn't here, Highview Terrace man told police he received a call from a woman identifying herself as his granddaughter saying she was under arrest and needed bail money. He received additional calls from another man and women, woman both identifying themselves as police officers and corroborating, corroborating the granddaughter's story. The man brought the money to Rite Aid on Mammoth Road and sent, them to, sent the money to a location in Arizona as instructed. He returned to Rite Aid to buy more money after the police officers called back saying more money was required. And that was when the Rite Aid manager intervened. And the article goes on to say anyone with information, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, right in the next town. So we're really thrilled to, to have here tonight Pat Lyons, an AARP volunteer. Pat's a retired mortgage banker and has been employed in banking for the past 30 years. She's been an AARP fraud fighter since April 2011 when the program started. Yes. A resident of Manchester. No, no, no. No, from Nashua, I'm sorry. I'm too Manchester <laughs> on the brain here. I'm a senior citizen. Oh. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> okay. She's been in Nashua for 46 years. 
and she's been married to John here for 47. She attended Lowell State Teachers College, which is now UMass Lowell, and was elected to the New Hampshire House of Representatives in 1982. While in the House, Pat sponsored and passed several vital pieces of legislation. Most importantly, a Victim's Bill of Rights. She enjoys her four children, five grandchildren, gardening, reading, volunteering, and traveling. <laughs> so, Pat, good. thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for letting us present the AARP program. Tonight's um, AARP presentation, we have a brand new presentation that's just coming out now. Um, I'm not comfortable with it, so you will be the last ones to get this presentation from me. It'll take me a little while to get more comfortable. It's the same material as is um, in both. It's an, uh, important to convey this information. It's just done a little differently. So thank you for coming. And um, I am very loose. We're very easy. Everybody should have a package that looks similar to one of these. And they should all have slides on them. If I weren't technically challenged, we would have a slideshow. But I'm not nuts about that because nothing I'm going to say is going to follow any of this stuff. Just everything that we do talk about will be the same stuff that's covered in there. The other thing that I want to let you know is, please interrupt me if you have questions because none of us are going to remember at the end. So <laughs> ask me as we go along. and. Um, We'll address it then, or I'll make a note to make sure that we address it, okay? When Susan was reading her little introduction, this, the repetitiveness of one thing stood out, and that seemed to be seniors. And out of all of the people that are targeted, seniors has the largest group of targeted people. And I want to know what you think is the reason for that. So if I open this with open discussion, don't think you're going to sit there and say nothing. <laughs> so why are seniors targeted? I think because we are more trusting than younger generations. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. More vulnerable. OK. We have younger children and grandchildren, which is potentially a source of money you know, for anybody that can uh, assume mm -hmm. uh, a lot more than some of the other people can assume. Right. We have acquired our wealth, whatever it is. If it's $5,000 or $500,000, that is our wealth, and that's what we've, uh, we've acquired over our years. So we have money. No matter what it is, it's our money, and that's all we have. We are afraid to report things to the authorities because, as Susan had said, if your kid finds out that you've been writing out checks or sending money or doing this or doing that, chances are they're going to take some of your independence away, like the checkbook or you don't write a check unless, you know, I know that we that where that money is going. So we're afraid to give up our independence. We are very trusting. I don't think there's a more gen a generation more trusting than we are left, anyways. Um, we hitting the grandparent scam. I don't know about anybody else in this room, but the most important thing in my life are my grandchildren. And you hit that chord, and I'll do anything for them, uh, as probably most of us would. Uh, giving up your first bond probably is nowhere near as difficult <laughs> as <laughs> doing something for a grandchild. Um, let's say we're true trusting. Um, oh, we're always home. You know, <laughs> those of us that are retired are at home. And the doorbell rings or the phone rings. And we answer it. And we're too polite, all except for me. You come to my door and 
and get my husband, he'll talk to you for 20 minutes. <laughs> but um, we're too polite. We don't want to be rude. We don't want to hang up on you. We don't want to slam the door in your face. So it's the generation that scammers feel like they can attract. And they have these rooms in some faraway place um, with millions of telephones, maybe not millions, but lots of telephones. They're called boiler rooms. And people sit there all day long just calling you. I heard somebody talking about, I don't know if it was Rachel, but this is your last chance when I came in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, how many have gotten that phone call? <laughs> this is your last chance. For over a chance. year. Yes, and no, then they call you three right. more times. Then they call you three more times that same day. So, <laughs> a lot of repetition. Uh, uh, yes, and it is annoying. And I and I have gotten to the point where I hang up. Sorry. I let the phone hang. Uh, the, yeah, there you go. And maybe 15 minutes they'll wait, and then they're trying to hang up, and then. It's a recording, though. It's a, it's a recording. Yeah, the, Rachel, she's the recording. Yeah. She, mm -hmm. that is one of the recordings, but. Yeah, it is. It's off. It's annoying. Yes. Um, in my house, my husband and I, we don't answer the phone unless we have caller ID, yeah, unless, unless we you know the name is. or yeah. the number. And the rest yeah. of that, it goes to the machine. They all hang up right away yeah. when they know they're on the machine. Yeah. So we don't even deal with it. It's I have a daughter who it always comes private caller, so I know it's her, and all, all of a sudden, somebody else one of these places private. has got private caller up there. For some reason, I think there is a way for them to, to track that because... We also have caller ID, and we were getting these calls. It was Rachel a, a year or so ago, but I don't know what the name is now of the person because I never really let them go that far. First of all, if it's a recording, it's an illegal phone call in the first place, so you can call the Federal Trade Commission and report that. Because even if you are not on the do not call list, any recordings are illegal. How many people are on the do not call list? everybody's hand should go up. There's, in, in this packet, you will see a page of telephone numbers. Call them, put your name on the do not call list. If you receive a phone call, again, the onus is on the person. If you receive a phone call and it's a recording, regardless of whether you're on the do not call list or not, you should report that. If you're on the do not call list and it's a real person, what I usually do, it depends on the mood I'm in and how much time I have, but I will get as much information as nicely as I can. And then when I'm get done getting my information, I will say to them, I'm on the do not call list, I will be reporting you immediately to the Federal um, Trade Commission. I try to always read the number that's yep. calling, but sometimes they have uh, as many as a fit in that slot. That's, right, that's correct. Just, uh, yep. Um, so, yes. Another thing, too, is many of these calls, there's a delay. And what I tend to do, if I pick up a phone, and I have caller ID, too, if I don't know the number, I don't do it. You know, you're vulnerable sometimes. Yeah. You pick up the phone, and if there's like a 10 second delay, you know, I just hang up. Oh, that's what my husband yeah. used to do. Yeah, yeah. he said, pick it up and hang up. I was thinking of getting a whistle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A good <laughs> but That would hurt. <laughs> Um, frequently to what Mark said. Ma oh, Mark is also an AARP fraud fighter. I'm sorry. I didn't know you. In training. Um, I'm sorry. I should have said something. Mark Boyd, boy, he's new with us, and um, he asked if he could come along. And, and uh, So please throw in any information or any questions or anything that you have, Mark. Um, I did a seminar here, uh, one of these presentations here in Londonderry, maybe about a year ago, at a over 55, and I learned something from you guys. Well, every time I come to one of these, I learn something from you guys. But somebody in the crowd said, you say hello, nothing happens. You say hello a second time, then that triggers, and you start. they start giving you this feel. So now, I only say hello once, and then I just hang up. And you try that. See if that's not the case. They won't say anything until you say hello the second time and then they start in on you. So it's like you got one shot. And when they call and they say Mrs. Leon's or Mrs. Something Else and they do not, Lions isn't a terribly difficult name, but when they don't pronounce it correctly, I know they don't know me. And I say, nope, sorry, there's nobody here by that name. So um, 
I was going down another track. And I'm sure it will come back to me. You were talking <laughs> about when you were, you were keeping down the information, you'd say, I'm going to report Oh, yes. To and, then, and then there is a telephone number for you to report those calls to. And what you would do is call them and tell them. And again, it's just a recording, and it's a prompt, and it takes five minutes for you to do this, and it's a pain in the butt, and the onus is always on you. I don't know if it helps or not, but you call them, and you follow the prompts and you're reporting a call, uh, yes it was a recording, or no it wasn't a recording, and then at the very end you have an opportunity to say something. I have a chimney guy in Nashua that calls me at least three times a week. And I say, I'm on the do not call list, and they don't care. So when I have the time, I'll call and report it to the 800 do not call number. I don't know if they'll ever do anything about it or not, but it's pretty annoying. And I don't know if there is anything they can do, you know, again, manpower. Somebody mentioned how the all those numbers are in there when on the caller ID. Yeah. I think they reroute these numbers. Um, we were told at one point at AARP that if the call is coming from someplace else, they can't do anything about it. Um, if they're local calls, they can put a stop to them. So if, you, if these calls are being generated from somewhere else, I don't know why, but they can't be stopped. The somewhere else you mean? Like different country. Oh. Okay. One thing that I had noticed was I would frequently receive phone calls from a 207 number, which was in Maine, and which is a Maine, and a 480 number, which is Arizona. And usually when I saw those numbers come up, it would be my son or my brother, and I would answer the phone. And then I noticed after a while, so I know there is a way to track this, I would see the 480 number come up, or the 207 number come up, thinking it's my kid or my brother, and answer the phone, and it's a solicitor or a scam. So they must be able to track the numbers that come into my home that I, I, get, I get lots of numbers from those places, so chances are she's going to pick them Telephone up. Telephone company is storing them, aren't they? <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, Somehow read, they're read able to track this table. down. So now I'm not so sure when, a, when those numbers come in that it's really somebody that I want to talk to. And it will show up on, so I, there has to be a way that they can track that down. And then does it have their whole, it's 207, and then do they and have then a number? number. And, yeah. and it's the right number? No, it's not, I, I just see the 207. Oh, okay. If you ask me what my son's number was, I wouldn't know. I just know the area code is 480. And then he calls from work, he calls from home, he calls from the cell phone, he calls from the wife's cell phone. Okay. You know, okay. so I'm lucky I remember it's a 480 <laughs> number. And the same with the 207 number, you know, the cell phone, landline. Oh, 207, it must be somebody I know, you know. No, it, it frequently isn't. Another thing that's happened lately that I really resent, that the foreign-speaking people, did you, I understand you had a bladder surgery, you know, with the, mm -hmm. the thing that's been in the paper that... Oh, the mesh or the something. The mesh yeah. thing, yeah. and a kidney operation, and I have. But how are they, they getting that information from the hospitals? I don't know. With the way the hospitals, I mean, I can't even talk to the doctor company? about my husband or he about me. <laughs> so I don't know how this. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know how this information gets out. Yeah. I think it might know? be a random, just a random. Oh, they get it from an insurance company. Yep. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But it's not, uh, you know, they been a lot in the news about yeah. going to your doctor or something. But these are foreign speaking people. Yeah. I can hardly understand them. The, uh, one of the newer scams are, um, hello Mrs. Lyons, you're, this is so-and-so from the um, shipping department. When would you like your lift shipped or when would you like your You'd like saving so your life, your, yeah, your, your, your mom yeah. shipped to you. Um, my neighbor told me she got this call three times in one day. It's just a scam. It's just, and then I think, oh gosh, did did he order, he order one of those, or yeah. did she order one of those, or 
did the kids order one of those? And, and it's just a way to get you. Then once you say, oh, well, you can deliver it next week, then they've got you, you know? So that's one thing to be, be careful of. You were talking about computers. Another fairly new scam is you will get a call, and this has happened to me, that says, this is so-and-so from either your provider from Comcast or from uh, um, yeah, Microsoft. Microsoft, I, I Microsoft, Microsoft yeah. seems to be the, I think that's the one I got the most recently. And I need you to go into your computer and give me this information and that information. No, they will never, they will never do that. Uh, they will never request that information. And you never follow a link. Mm -hmm. I worked for Wells Fargo and I would get this email. I'd be sitting in Wells Fargo with a Wells Fargo computer and I would get an email from Wells Fargo asking for my account number. Or, and I'm saying, you know everything about me. My blood type, my shoe size, you damn well know my account number. So I called my boss one day and he said, no, no, that's somebody fishing, trying to get that information from you. And it has the logo on it. I've gotten the same thing from other banks that I deal with, um, other lenders. So just be very careful. And the same with your credit cards. Look at your credit card statement very carefully. Uh, make sure, line by line item. Yes, so that was mine. Yes, that was mine. Yes, that was mine. Oh. And verify the, the amounts. And verify the, the amounts. amounts. Yeah, yes. make sure they're the right yeah. amounts. Yeah. Yeah. Credit cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and verify the amounts. Um, they'll only go back like three months if you haven't noticed it. Um, and the fourth month you look and you say, oh my gosh, there's a $30, $30 recurring charge. What is that for? And you call them and say, well, it's been on there for the past three months. We can only go back three, you know, we can only do these three months, but you have no idea who it is. Um, nothing that I generated, but just watch for that too. And you're usually, if you're working with a good credit card company, um, they take care of those issues. I've had credit cards companies call me and ask us if we were charging here and charging there. And, and unfortunately, every time they've called twice, once was Citibank and another time it was uh, Capital One. And they had caught somebody using our card. Was We physically had the cards you know, in all cases. But uh, no, I did not rent a tuxedo in New York City. <laughs> and uh, no, I did not fill up with gas in some border, border gas station from Connecticut to New York. They noticed, used to fill up the gas in this town in Connecticut and in that town in New York within two hours. You know, chances are that that wasn't going to happen. Um, so they somehow know how to do this. They that particular time, they had spent about $500 on our cards, and she had asked to do we, uh, the cards in our possession, and both of us were home. We both had our Capital One cards, but she said that they went through the automatic, no place where you had to hand your card to somebody. Right. So they went to the gas station, they went to the grocery store, and did the self-scan, and um, so nobody else could had to see the card. How'd they get a card to... Well, they can make the cards very easily. Oh. How they got the number, who knows? It must have been a random number. I, I don't know. No, no. 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 Somebody, somebody... It generally... Uh, yes. Yeah. Someplace you had used your number. gas station to swipe the... Yeah. When you hand the card to a person at the gas station or to any vendor, you can change and take the number right off your hand. You know, if you've got a ink on there, they can take the uh, imprint right off of it. Yeah. They can, yeah. Get, they can get your number. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you don't have to hand over the card, don't hand over the card. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that's still, they say people stand behind you closely when you yeah. take yeah. Yeah. money out of an ATM. Yeah. 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 They can memorize it. Do you know how most information gets distributed about you? By you. <laughs> yeah. Without yeah. even knowing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. The same way, uh, like that, you give them the card, then somebody does that. You fill out a warranty, you bought a new toaster, you fill out a warranty, you fill out all that information. Yes, there's 
three people living in my home, nobody over 18, nobody under 18, what, you know, whatever, yes, I like to play golf, yes, I like to fish. You get all that information, you send that back when all they really needed to know was how much you paid for the toaster and where you bought it and when you bought it. But you fill out all the rest of that stuff. So don't give out any additional information that, that you that don't need to give. That goes into a data bank which they add with every other thing that you've ever submitted. Right. And count it all up. You'd be surprised how much on your name, just one name, they can tally up. Google yourself someday. See what comes up on the computer. Yeah. But um, so so a lot of times, and then of course there are public records. Yes, you own a home, or you know, there's so much that is a public record. But uh, lots of times we give them this information without even realizing it. Okay. Um, as Susan said, fraud fraud is happening, and according to the FTC, uh, there's an estimate, estimated 25 million. Americans are frauded each year, and um, a great deal of them are, are the seniors. If I'm not mistaken, there were larger numbers in the new, the new um, presentation that just came out, so those numbers might be old by now, which is kind of sad. Um, and again, the seniors are because we don't want to lose our independence, and we don't. We have acquired this little bit of wealth. And we're, we're easy. We're, we're very easy. What other scams have you heard of that we haven't talked about? We talked about a few. We talked about the computer guy calling, saying he's from Microsoft, and we've talked about everybody who's familiar with the um, thing that just happened at Target. Target. Okay. One thing that I have found out from doing this is that your credit card is more secure than your debit card. Okay? Oh. So yes. keep that yeah, in I mind. I read that because the credit card company will stand behind well, you. Yes. Right. And, and the debit is cashed it's, on. Right it's cash is gone it. right then and there. Yeah. And you don't, don't, they go from one account to another. If you've got all your accounts tied together, it's not just the debit card they're after. Mm -hmm. They're after all the other accounts. But what about all, all the stuff in your bank? Yeah, so just Everything. watch that, so. Everything. I don't know. Everything. You had something you wanted I, I to say. I was just going to say that. I was just going to ask you that question because I had just gone to my bank and upgraded my credit card because mm -hmm. I'm traveling in May. Uh -huh. And they recommended uh, the upgrade because the upgraded card includes a travel chip. Okay. And apparently this is new because mm -hmm. I traveled to Ireland in 2008 and my husband and I had, we had no problem using right. the credit card. Now they accept them with this travel chip, so I did mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Several years back, I had my debit card mm -hmm. uh, compromised, where and I checked my account every day, yeah. mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I got gas charges from Virginia, mm -hmm. convenience stores, mm -hmm. and all these things. And it was about I don't know, three, four hundred dollars. Yep. So I went right into the bank and. They made it good. They, they, they did it. But what they call they open a fraud case with their yep. fraud center. Yep. And and I said to them, well, do you ever catch these people? And she said, no. No. Um, Rarely. A couple of things that you just said that, again, triggered what we're talking about, triggered things that are in here. But this chip is new. And you will find that as you get your new credit cards, more and more of them will have the chip on it. They're going to do away with that magnetic strip. The chip is safer. Um, banks are just coming around to doing it now. I guess it's more expensive than the little chip, and they'll get you one way or another. But um, uh, it's, apparently, it's a little bit safer than the strip. So when it comes for the, to renew your credit card, you may have to pay five dollars more or something. So the new ones will come in with the chip on it, which is safer. Many don't. I, I traveled to France this year and I looked, called many for chip and pin technology and um, I had to go through AARP to get a card uh -huh. for chip and pin technology. My other banks didn't offer it. Um, it so it's should still be coming not. No, no, because it's more expensive for them to produce. So. And can if you, you see the chip or is it just embedded? Can um, you tell by looking? I, I, I think you can tell. I think it 
I think it just has the chip on it, and I think you can see it. I'm just starting with it because, you know, oh. I belong to the IEEE. Oh, okay. And uh, they have just put out an article in the IEEE Community uh -huh. Magazine uh -huh. saying that this is just being started. Okay. That's as of this point. Yeah. It's being used in Europe. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. We're behind yeah. times. Yeah. yeah, we're behind times. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> so Europe. the credit card is safer than using a debit card. That's just Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Give yes. me a debit card. Yeah. It may be convenient, but it's deadly. Yeah. Uh, also, if you are going to travel, if you are traveling, um, make sure you let your credit card company know. Oh, yeah. I, I, look, I misplaced my young one. No. I don't. It shows I know. It's oh, not a lot of money. It's 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 not a don't hold me. Maybe it's not there, but it's right. But I know one of the cards that well, I have is on my cards. Oh, I know Capital One uh, always wanted to be notified when we were going to be going away. The last trip that we took, we were away for a long time and we went through half of the states. So the next time we were going to go away, I went online to notify them that we were going away and it came up in big red letters, you don't have to let us know anymore. So they probably know that we travel. Frequent traveler. <laughs> you know, frequent traveler, you know. Yeah, they do. Um, I but but I still go talk. in and I still I still do it, you know. It says you don't yeah. have to because they know we travel, but um, it's, it's a good thing to do. Um, I know American Express I, has that chip and you can see it. I don't think the Capital One has the chip yet, and if it does, I don't think you can see it. This is really new. Which one. is that? Which one is that? Capital One. It, it, yeah, when that expires. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dolores, do you have the chip on you? I took the one with the chip. I left it with my passport. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it has yeah. this magnetic strip. It has the magnetic strip. I'm not sure. I, I don't know, but the yeah, new one's coming now. out too. Yeah. Probably most of them will have it. Yeah, a little, a little square. Oh, is that what it is? It's just a square. This one has the same square on it. I just got this one. Oh, maybe that is it. But I thought the one that I saw had like, you almost see like a little wire through it. It's brand new. Well, it might have, yeah, it's shiny, but it's just a tiny little square on that part. It's smaller than this. Oh, it's it's about that size, yeah. Yeah, that might be. Is that a debit card or is that a credit card? Credit. Okay, so that, that, that could be like that. Um, I just got this really much. Okay, see. so that's probably so let's see, chip see a little clear, yeah. just clear. I got to look at my And my I got. Okay. Okay. one, one, I you know had expired, and yeah. they sent me a new one, and that has the same thing on it. Oh, and that's good. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> if you go into the bank, they can tell you. All right, let's not have a debit card. I'm afraid I won't enter it. I heard you mention the grandparent scam. Um, as I said, you want to get to me, get to me through my grandkids. Um, my sister the same way, unfortunately, a bright woman, um, got caught up in that and got a phone call from Canada saying that her grandson, Sean, wanted her to send $2,000 because he was picked up um, crossing the border with drugs in his car. Um, he didn't have the drugs, but the kids he with, were with did. And he didn't want his mother to know because he didn't want to upset her. Didn't want his father to know because he was a state trooper. And decided that his grandmother would bail him out. So there was somebody at the house with my sister at this time. And she said, well, I can send you that money. Told him exactly where to send it. The tip off here is Western Union, okay? So she said, well, I'll have to go to the bank and get it. My husband is, is sick. Uh, I have to get somebody to stay with him. So she turned to the caregiver that happened to be there, and he, she said, I will stay with Dick, but you are not going to go do this. Um, you are going to call the police. So she called the police, 
and it was a scam. The police said, have you called Sean? And she said, no. So the next call was to Sean, and she said, where are you? And he said, I'm at work. <laughs> where would you expect me to be? So um, you can't take these people. You, you have to follow through by doing your due diligence and always report. Um, somebody was talking about something else that happened. Report that when you, when you were hit uh, for your debit card. Those all should be reported to your local police. Chances are nothing is ever going to happen. Nobody's ever going to find them, but it will be on record. I just went to the bank. Yeah, but I, the police should also know. And um, when that happened to our credit card, to the Capital One, police officer came to the door three times just to say, you know, we're still working on it, but chances are nothing's going to happen, but there's a record of it. Okay? Yeah. How did the caller know your grandson was named Sean? They do homework. And, and with Sean's mm -hmm. case, in, in Sean's case, um, yes, he had a lot of information on my nephew, on, uh, on my sister's grandson, but it was old information because his dad and his mom split years ago and dad moved down to Florida and hadn't been in town in what, at least 10, 15 years, John? And was a state trooper down there and then retired down there. So the information he had was somewhat correct. Again, found someplace that he was a state trooper here in Massachusetts. And, you know, then he moved away. Yeah. Just go online and search for your own name. Yeah, and see what. If you go on online and search your own name, you will find out who your children are. Yeah. So we located a relative that way. How old you are? How old you are? Where you live, where they live. I'm a great grandma. It's all online. Oh yeah. There's so much information online. You, you, know, you, yeah. you can't say it's not there. And you didn't put it on there. Right. <laughs> they can get this record information from birth certificates. They can yeah. so just you know, it get it all of you know, public records. Mm -hmm. They can get it from public records. Yes. Another thing, I don't know if it has to do with fraud, but um, they read this years ago. You get a call from a policeman. Saying, somebody's injured or somebody needs mm -hmm. money or something, and uh, you should ask his name, mm -hmm. hang up and dial and call that police station and yeah. ask for him. Sometimes it, that, that's a scam too. Yeah, that's, that's very true. You always initiate the call. Something comes to you by computer, click on this link, never, never call the bank uh, and say, did that, no, we would never ask you those questions. You did the right thing by calling us. Um, you get a call like that, hang up, get the get the name, hang up, call your local police department. Mm. Is Officer Williams there? No, we don't have an Officer Williams yeah. here. Uh, the other thing that we don't do, and that is to notify the Attorney General's office. So when these scams happen, the grandparent scam or stuff like your credit card, um, notify the Attorney General in the state of New Hampshire. My daughter-in-law was an assistant attorney general in the state of Vermont, and she was in charge of consumer affairs. And she said every Monday morning, they had a conference call with the other 49 states with the attorney general assistant that was in her position, and they would discuss these kinds of things. And some state would say, well, we had uh, such and such. We got six phone calls on this thing happening. And then another state would say, you know what, we got a couple of those phone calls too. So they would talk about this and figure out what was going on and the latest things that people were being scammed about. And it would take place, that's how they would share their information on a conference call from the Attorney General's office. So it's important to notify the Attorney General too. Okay. Um, can I just say one more thing about credit cards? Um, this happened to my daughter who's going to New York. What happened was when she was at work, people left their purses in a certain place. Someone went into her purse, looked at her card, got the information off the card, returned the card to her purse. She, so she had absolutely no, no idea, idea her card was ever compromised. Um, and then they bought thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment using her credit card. Yeah. 
number. And the only reason she was able to find that out is because she solved the case herself. Because when she reported to the credit card companies, they don't do anything. Um, and so she had to follow all the leads and all the places and find out who actually did those purchases. Uh, they had to pick up the equipment. They had to get the equipment, so she tracked it down herself. But that was how she found out it was done. And her credit card company wouldn't do anything for her? Well, no, they did. They took care of it. Oh. They won't do anything to solve. Oh, okay. to solve the case. They yeah. don't do anything to catch yeah. people. Again, the onus is on the consumer. If you if you track it down, but it was good she did that because she found out it was a, it was the the boss in her office was doing it. Oh my god. Oh nice. <laughs> and then he disappeared. Nice. <laughs> wow. nice. Wow. Okay, we talked about the grandparent fraud, we talked about some other other scams. There's a guy in our our AARP office um, that tells the story and I have to tell it because it's it's so crazy, it's unbelievable, it's so unbelievable that it's believable. Um, here in New Hampshire we have a lot of small towns that have no public sewer system, they're just on septic. And this guy was doing a presentation, I forget what town, I'm going to have to ask him one of these days. And um, people had raised their hand and said that they have, I don't know how many rolls of toilet paper in the garage because the town is on septic. And somebody came to the door, two young men came to the door saying, from now on you're gonna to have to use this kind of toilet paper and you can buy it from us. <laughs> and they believed it because it was a new new town law that said you couldn't use shaman or whatever. The kind that they had, the kind that they already had. Whatever kind or, now this is, this is developed specifically for your septic system here in this town. So this is the one that you have to buy. So they bought, I don't know how much worth, and stored it in the garage. Gee, you go in the store to buy it and it says for septic use. Again, you know, people, are, <laughs> we're too trusting, you know, and you get, especially a couple of older people or, oh, if the, if the man says that's what we need to do, then that, that's what we need to do. Yeah, we'll buy $500 worth. It's crazy, but it happens. You know? Um, Question? Yeah. Now, if you initiate the phone call, then your chance, you won't get scanned if you initiate well, the if phone you know, call. No, if you initiate the phone call, chances are you're not going to get scammed because you know where you're calling. You're going to call your town hall. You're not going to call some number that says, call me back at 888-888-888. Um, because that's the number they're going to answer. You're going to call your bank directly. You're going to call the town hall. You're going to call your local police. You're going to initiate that call and you're going to know where you're calling. Okay? Um, fraudulent telemarketers marketers are everywhere. And again, we've already talked about those guys. We've already talked about the boiler rooms. Uh, guide your personal information. Oh, how many people have shredders? Okay, good. Go buy one. <laughs> I, I have my own system. <laughs> we just bought when I was died like on Saturday and on Sunday I said, I'm gonna balance the checkbook, let's go get a new one. So on Sunday we went to Staples and got a new one. Um, crush crush shredder, you can buy them for a hundred bucks less. You know, just shred everything. Get one um, that'll take cards. Yep, yeah, I know. Take your credit card. Yeah. yeah. Um, your credit cards, you as they go out. Yeah, you know, bank, uh, bank and, statements. Uh, you still get your bank statements and your bills in your mailbox? Do I you? do. Yeah. You do, huh? Well, it's not saving it paper because if it was on my computer, no, no. I would print it off. Right. Because I can check it better. However, that however, however that you don't have a computer, computer, you said, that's right? That's okay, that's so that's you that's have that's no that's option. That's it is safer, listen to me. And I am technically challenged. It is safer, I am told, by AARP and others to receive your statements and pay your bills online. Okay? If you live in an apartment complex with the key thingy there, um, or senior housing or something like that, you might be safe. But for years, I said, I'll never pay a bill online. I'll never, you know, I mean, I don't know how to turn the thing on. So um, I've been listening and paying attention. And 
when they say you put your Macy's bill out in the mailbox and you go off to work. And yeah, we live in a nice neighborhood, but nice neighborhoods are also the ones that get hit. Somebody comes along and they pull out your Macy's bill. They have your Macy's account number on it. They have your check with your checking account number on it. And they're halfway there. Um, so I get all my statements by computer and I pay all my bills by computer. Oh, yeah, I, I never that. thought I would do that. Another thing you can do is multiply how many bills you pay a month by 55 cents. Uh, 49, 49, 50, something cents. like that. No, I pay all my bills online and mail my mail at the post office. Or if you're going to mail something, post mail your mail at the post office. Anything correct. that has a check Or get a post, post office yeah. box. Post yeah. Okay, I live in a condo, so it's, we have an outgoing have mail a, slot. Yeah. Is that safe, you think? I would think so, because the mailman is going to open you that up and take that. Yeah. yeah. But what, what, I, what I, they're trying to tell you is, you know, we live on a quiet street with a mailbox at the end of the driveway until three years ago, we, the two of us went to work every day and came home every day put the mail out in the morning and picked up the mail at night. You know, somebody could come by and take those bank statements and or... Especially at the beginning of the month when the Social Security yeah. checks come. So they come at all different times in the month. And make yeah. sure... Mine go straight to the bank. And make <laughs> sure you do shred. You get those offers in the mail for credit cards. Make shred. sure you shred that. Make sure you get the cross shredder too. Because if somebody has the patience, they will... Put all those puzzles back together, mm -hmm. just just as they did in that movie Iago. They had all those kids put all that stuff back together, so uh, it can be done. Be wary of door by door to door salespeople. Never let them in. Uh, still, are they still out there? They are. Yeah. They're not too many of them, but they are. Um, and also the ones telling you, you know, they're collecting. Speaking of collecting, when you do charities. Hopefully you know who you are giving to, and you've checked them out. In here there is a tell, there are, not only are there, is there computer addresses in here, there's also telephone numbers to back up this stuff for those that don't have a computer. But there's a good site in here called navigator.com, so it will check out the institution that you want to make a donation to, the association you want to make a donation to. There are Unfortunately, some unscrupulous people out there that will say they're collecting money for the Society Association for Cancer Research, or, and that might be a good one, I don't know. But use the same words, but mix them up, and it's not the American Cancer Society. Right. And you're giving a check to the Cancer Society of America, which might be fraudulent. So there's an um, address in there that you can check or you can call to make sure who you are sending that check to is correct. Um, tell them to put the information in the mail and mail it to you if, if you want to. Oh, yeah, you, it is, there is something in here that it is all mixed up. Um, you know what you, I see now, and I don't know if anybody else has seen the panhandlers, like at Outside of the grocery yes. Yeah. yes. It's right in the, in the uh, grocery well, store. Yeah. And I went in and told the uh, manager, and he cried, he said, that guy's been around here all the time. Right in the front row at the post office. Page 12. Page 12, and then there's additional said, numbers on the Oh, beat it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just, okay. I was when he came up to the car, I locked the door. You could see I was getting out of the car. Mm. At the market basket, lunch lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 At the market basket, lunch lady. You see over there, standing down by 102 now. Yes. It used to be further up, but now they're... Further down. Right, because the manager probably said something. All, all yes. cities, are, really cool all cities are trying to uh, to try to do something about that. They can't. Um, we're part of the neighborhood watch, and he said, "We all we all you can do is kind of move them along. They're not loitering." Um, what if it's legit? If they're really invested to it? Well, that's no, some not. of them are, and that's uh -huh. when some of them are. You know, we'll. Three, three, three little kids, no job. We'll work for food. Yeah, you know. Um, we see a market pass. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Um, if yeah. you are shopping on the internet, always use um, the lockbox to make sure that it's a safe site. 
I don't have pen pal, but I'm told that that's the best way to pay. Pay pal. Pay pal. <laughs> I don't have a pen pal either. <laughs> you can tell how old I am. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a PayPal account, um, but they say that's the safest way. I still am trusting and I still use my credit card. But just, again, watch those statements. Uh, sweepstakes, any foreign street sweepstake is illegal. And you never, ever, ever pay money to get money. So send us $500 and we'll send you $23,000. Oh, <laughs> so just be careful for that. Uh, or we need your bank account number to drop this money into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's not going to work. Um, so just ignore those things, but report them, okay? Um, we talked about the telemarketing, the pre-recordings pre are all illegal, and get yourself on the do not call list. Uh, work at home scams, if it's too good to be true, chances are it is, okay? Keep that in mind. You never have to do any upfront money, or you be careful if you're planning on working at home and you are shelling out some upfront money. Make sure you know exactly where it's going. Um, you are entitled to a free credit report once a year. And there's lots of companies out there that say they have free credit reports, but you have to give them your credit card you have to, to get that credit report. Well, you probably have to give them your social security number or else they have no way of getting your credit card, your credit report. But there is only one company out there that is free, and again, that's in here someplace. Credit Karma? Credit Karma? No, you know what I noticed? Somebody mentioned that at the, at the one we were at last week in Newton, and she said, they keep saying it's free, it's free, it's free. Well, I saw that commercial last night, and they're not giving you a credit report. They're giving you your credit score. Score. So if you want just your credit score, that's one thing. But the free credit report is free credit report. Com. It's in here. But that one will probably just give you for free your three scores. But you can get one. Um, you only can get one. You can only get one once a, one credit score? One score. No, page 13. Okay. It's on page 13 on uh, slide number 25, center of the page. Okay. But, uh, you but can only get one per year from each one of the. Okay, so credit reports. So again, there's the credit report that you will get free, and then others will suck you in. If you have to give your credit card, they're going to bill you every month for tracking that. Um, and credit com karma is, I believe, just your score. So I think that's the difference. Um, so keep that in mind. And it's not the same on all of the, uh, the three outlets that do these. Right. They have, each one of them has their own score. Report. Their own score, correct. Yeah. So you, you don't know um, which one you're going to get from. Less than mm -hmm. So if you do, but if you do the once, once a year, you do get a full credit report. You'll get it from one of the three. One of the three. One of the three. <coughs> really? I'm trying to think. The last time I did it, I thought it was all free, but okay. I won't argue, I'm not arguing with you. I'll just have to try it again. That's all. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay? And there are places that will track it for you for 10 or 12 bucks a month, too. And lots of people are comfortable with, the, with that, too. It's worth 120 bucks to them or whatever it is uh, a year to, to do that. Um, to do what? There are companies out there that will track your credit report for a fee. Oh, oh, oh. And some people are comfortable with spending 10 bucks a month to do that. Yeah, if a bank has a problem, or a company has a problem, and I've run into those two times, once with a bank and once mm -hmm. where I work, mm -hmm. uh, they had a problem with their, uh, mm -hmm. their security, mm -hmm. and they gave us that feature for okay. a year. We had to sign up for it, and uh, it comes out about $12 a month. That was free to us. Oh, yeah. Same TV bank about a year ago because well, it just ended. Same yeah. Mary's did the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Textron yep. Corporation had a problem. Okay. Big time. Yeah. So, you know, so there are ways of tracking it, but uh, get the free one once a year anyways, or what, whatever you're entitled to. Um, dumpster diving, that's another thing. So again, we go back to the shredder, shred everything. Okay. You get these... There's also a way, and those, these numbers I believe are also in here, to opt out of these um, banks that send you credit card applications in the mail. First of all, shred them when you get them, but call and get on that do not solicit list. Okay? Because there are ways to get rid of that. And again, it says provide on the warranty cards just the information that's needed. You don't have to tell them you like to knit or crochet or do any of that stuff. It's like he said, it goes into a bank and eventually they know everything about you. Um, you know, on that line, um, I've sometimes um, done things online that said, oh, you know, um, answer this, these quick questions and we'll, you'll get some kind of prize or whatever sort of. Well, those questions balloon into yeah. more, more questions that seem to never end. Never you end. never get to the end. And after a while, you think, I thought, well, this is getting me nowhere, and this is suspicious, so I end it. But I think, in the meantime, they gather all that, that information. information. You don't get anything, really, yeah. unless you tell them everything. Yeah. No, just um, stop that. Yeah. Okay, I, I think that's it. We talked about the charitable fraud, uh, charitable donations, so check that out. Um, Smart donations, awesome. We're all, we are, we are. We're just about there. Education we, um, is the <laughs> best way to prevent fraud. Absolutely. And we thank you for being here, Pat. Thank we you thank you all in the audience for sharing your experiences and ways to prevent fraud. And we thank Wayne for taping us. Thank for CTV <laughs> 20 to show to all residents of Londonderry so that great. we can all oh, learn <laughs> from you. So again, okay. please thank you for being here and join me in thanking Pat. Thank you.